topic I didn't get a, get a chance to talk about in section 14.3, but which is important, is the concept of higher order partial derivatives. So, uh, so far we've only talked about first derivatives uh, for partial derivatives, but we know from Calculus 1 that we could take second derivatives and third derivatives, and there certainly are reasons why we would care about taking uh, a higher order derivatives. For, for example, um, in, uh, there are certain second derivatives tests that tell us information about concavity of functions uh, in, in uh, Calculus 1. And so, uh, as it turns out, we, we have the corresponding notion of higher order derivatives for these partial derivatives here. So, the, the thing is we have to be careful about, well, now we have, assuming that we're starting off with a function of x and y, there's actually several different possibilities that we could have for uh, second order to partial derivatives. So, we could say, okay, f, f, fxx is the partial derivative with respect to x of the partial derivative with respect to x of f and or the notationally uh, so partial square f partial x squared we we also have I'm, I'm purposely leaving a little bit of blank space here fyy is the partial take two partial derivatives with respect to y But then we can also take partial derivative with respect to x and then with y, or partial derivative with respect to y and then to x. So fxy would be, so first you take a partial derivative with respect to x, and then you take a partial derivative with respect to y. So our notation there is d squared f dy dx. Uh, or we could have partial derivative to respect to x, partial derivative, so first you take the partial derivative to respect to y, and then to, with respect to x, so that would be d squared f dx dy. So here we have these four possibilities for our higher order uh, partial derivatives. Uh, these would just be the second order partial derivatives. We could also have something like you know, do, do whatever you want to have here. F, X, Y, X, X, Y. That first you take an X derivative, then you take a Y derivative, then you take a couple of X derivatives, then you take a Y derivative. You can do this in, yeah, you can make up just how crazy of a higher order derivative that you want. Uh, let's work out an example of these four here. So let's say that our function in question is, let's say that f of x, y is x cubed plus y squared e to the x. So let's calculate out uh, the second order partial derivatives here. So first we'll start off by just doing the first order partial derivatives. So the x derivative here would be 3x squared plus y squared is a constant here, so plus y squared times e to the x. The uh, partial derivative with respect to y, the derivative of x cubed, that's a constant when y looks at it. So the only thing we take a derivative of here is 2y, e to the x stays as a, that looks like a constant. So now on for the second order ones fxx, we need to take an x derivative of the f sub x, and that's going to be 6x plus y squared e to the x. Uh, we can take fyy, now we take a y derivative of this, and we get uh, oops, 2 e to the x, the derivative of 2y is 2, e to the x looks like a constant. So now uh, for f x, y, we want to take the y derivative of f sub x, and so the y derivative, that will be a 0, and the y derivative over here will be 2y e to the x, and now we want to do f, y, x, so now we take the x derivative here, 
And the extrative is 2y e to the x. Um, uh, it would be good for you to check yourself that you understand where all four of those are coming from. But now also, uh, you want to pay attention here. Is there anything that's potentially surprising here? This is class. I'd wait for somebody to tell me. And the thing that you should notice here is that fxy and fyx are exactly the same. And that's not an accident. If, if I did a, did a different example here, you would see that in most cases, fxy is equal to f y x and this is no this this is what is known as Clairaut's theorem so Clairaut's theorem tells you that yes fxy is equal to fyx as long as they are both continuous so if if, if the partial derivatives of these so-called mixed partial derivatives aren't continuous, then you don't have, you don't have them are guaranteed to be the same thing. But if everything in sight is, is continuous and things like this, everything in sight here is, is nice looking, you are going to get Clairaut's theorem and you are going to get this equality here. Um, th this generalizes... Uh, so, for example, we could have things like f, x, y, x, y. So here we're taking two derivatives with respect to x, two derivatives with respect to y. It wouldn't matter what order we take those in. There's several more combinations, several more orders that you could do there. As long as, once again, if everything in sight is continuous, then, um, then life is good. So that's a little note about Clairaut's theorem that... So I guess first thing, now we know how to calculate this higher order partial derivatives. And in general, if everything in sight is nice, we only have to do one of these. And that's going to be important. Uh, so file this away. We're going to be using the second uh, order partials, including the fxy. This is going to come back in... This is going to come back in section 14.7. We'll do these calculations quite a bit.